Hello there. This is where the fun begins. Hey there guys, Unofficial Star Wars here. Hope you're all doing well. And in this video, we have our episode two and or breakdown review with things that you may have missed throughout the episode, as well as different Easter eggs and references throughout the episode as well. I'm gonna have some theories and predictions kind of sprinkled out throughout this video as well. So let's go ahead and hop right on into it. I also think it goes just without saying that, yes, spoilers ahead. The episode begins with another flashback type of video, this time of this tribe that Cassian is a part of and his younger childhood as we had discussed and talked about in our previous breakdown video here on the channel as they're making their way to a crash site of an Imperial ship that had crashed. We also get to explore a little bit more of this planet here as Cassian stops and looks at what appears to be a mining field set up by the Empire. I'm a little bit curious to learn a little bit more about this whole mining facility thing that they had going on, although there probably isn't a lot to go with it, so to speak, and it's, I don't know, probably just not there anymore. I also just have to say I love what they've been doing with these whole flashback type of scenes uh, throughout these episodes here as well. I think that they just line up so very well and I also want to give a huge shout out to the Book of Boba Fett for kind of like introducing flashbacks more into like the whole thing with Star Wars and everything like that because that there I think and I believe is really where we first began to see like heavy flashbacks especially with Star Wars. Another thing I've absolutely been loving about the overall Andor show is the way that we're not getting any like time gaps or anything like that. We leave directly off of from where we left off with episode one as the city is now kind of closing down or this little village type of thing is closing down and going to sleep as this guy is like ringing the bells and everything like that. Everybody's kind of shutting down shop and uh, while well, heading back to their homesteads. The scene is really important right here as we see Bix is looking at her computer. She's receiving a new transmission from the Empire. And this of course is like a wanted type of poster for Andor because he's now wanted from the Empire. However, she leaves a little bit of a mistake by leaving this whole thing up on the computer screen for her boyfriend Tim to see. And as we later learn throughout this episode is that he is the one that kind of rats out Cassian on where he is. From there we see Cassian finally return to his real home on this planet here and this is kind of like his mom right here. They're not technically biologically you know his mom or anything like that but from what we see in the flashbacks she is the one that takes him in. And as I had mentioned in our episode one breakdown I'm really curious on where on earth all the adults and parents are in those flashbacks because it just seems to be a tribe of kids. However Andor unfortunately has to kind of break the news to his mom that he's like wanted from the Empire and that he's just kind of fleeing from the planet now. He's getting out of there. Although he doesn't necessarily completely put it in those terms that, hey, mom, I'm wanted from the Empire. I am I'm on the run right now. Although, as we kind of see in episode three, she probably kind of figures that's kind of the case of what's going on there. And Cassian simply just tells her that he has to get off world for right now. I mean, honestly, her facial expressions say it all to me. From there, we see Andor go ahead and meet up with Bix in some type of Star Wars cantina styled bar. I mean, there's always some type of cantina or bar in Star Wars. It's also kind of from right here is where Andor is kind of saying like, hey, I'm out of here. I'm getting off world. I'm kind of wanted for right now. And he's also kind of seeking a little bit of an update for his buyer on where on earth his buyer is that's going to be the one that gives him the credits and we see his buyer later on in this episode who is Luthen. Importantly enough as well it's right here in this episode where Bix is able to spot her boyfriend Tim from across the bar seeing that he's a little bit tipsy a little bit drunk and not completely with it. He also doesn't like the entire fact that Andor still hangs around with Bix seeing as I had mentioned in the previous episode breakdown Bix and Andor kind of used to be a thing well boyfriend and girlfriend which just like much of the entirety of Star Wars is kind of unrealistic well this is too. But jokes aside Tim doesn't like this not one bit and decides to go ahead and I report Andor to the Empire. Remembering back a couple of scenes earlier on in this episode, how Bex accidentally left the information about Andor up on her computer and Tim read about it. So he knows about that this is Andor that the Empire is looking for. And kind of like the chum that Tim is, he goes ahead and he submits the photograph and everything about Andor that he knows to the Empire because he's, well, kind of out of it. He's tipsy and he's drunk about it and doesn't like the fact that Andor is hanging around with his girlfriend. It's from here where things kind of get a little bit, I guess, more adult time and theme here. There's something that's been teased about the overall Andor show like for the last couple of months is that this show is going to incorporate some of those tones and themes that are more meant for adults and we kind of get one of those many kissy scenes in Star Wars although this one I will say is a little bit more I think at it a little bit more intimate. Of course it's between Tim and his girlfriend Bix and uh, I don't know it's, I don't know anything about that. I mean I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan so I don't know anything about that. Anyway moving forward we get introduced to a new Imperial officer who's kind of on the same I guess bar so to speak with Cyril when it it comes to following the duties of what the Empire is meant for, especially somebody that is so intrigued and engrossed with finding the murderer of these two Imperials from episode one and at the beginning. Anyway, these two chums kind of discuss about, oh yeah, Empire, let's go get him type of thing, so yeah. The scene of Cassian kind of digging around in his little, so to speak, hideout, abandoned ship, I guess, on his home planet is important because now we're truly getting revealed of what Cassian plans to sell to the buyer that Bex has sent and that if Luthen is coming here to this planet to meet with Andor. And so as I had mentioned in 
our first episode breakdown, it's this little like Imperial tracker box where you're able to kind of find different Imperial outposts and ships and that type of stuff. It's something that's highly valuable to Luthen, who's kind of the, I guess, godfather of the rebellion, so to speak. And also seeing that it's kind of like nighttime as of right now, we go into another type of flashback type of thing because, well, I guess Andor's supposed to be sleeping right now. So see how that kind of lines up. Sort of as if it's like a dream, like, much like we saw within the book of Boba Fett, that every time Boba was in the back to tank and like kind of sleeping, it was like a flashback type of scene. So the tribe has now kind of snuck up on this Imperial crash site here and are kind of investigating it, see if there's any survivors that they might need to take care of and get rid of or actually help them because it would be nice. Well, in this case, they're not completely nice. And if for anything, it seems as if so that they've been infected with some type of virus. Now I'm going to have a different, like separate video here on the channel talking about this as a Star Wars theory. I believe that this would be the Blackwing virus. It's something that's part of Legends, I also believe. You guys will see about that more in just a moment. This poor girl right here, who seems to be kind of like the leader of this whole tribe, is the one that kind of goes in and is investigating everything. She pokes at the first dead kind of body, so to speak. Well, we think it's dead at least, and kind of carries on from there. And then this dead body like just rises up and like goes berserk, accidentally shooting her in the back and it's shooting off into the forest. And I swear, I thought it might have hit some of the other tribal me members that had been out there in the tree line. I guess not because nothing was said about any of them. Nobody really seemed as sad of it, I guess, also, so to speak. And everybody kind of hurried over to this girl. However, before we go back to the flashbacks, we go into the morning here, so to speak, now in like the present time of when this show is taking place as we see Luthen making his way to the planet to meet with Andor and he has to land a couple, I guess, a, a little bit away from, I guess, where everything is so he can lay low here from the rest of the Imperials or anything else kind of suspicious going on. And just like how this guy kind of put everybody to bed and closed the entire village down, he's kind of waking everybody back up again. He's like the roaster, I guess, or the rooster, so to speak, of a farm, right? waking everybody up. He's on alarm clock. This scene right here, we see Andor make a grave mistake by giving his little droid, this red droid named B, a calm or walkie-talkie essentially, so he's able to talk with him as Andor is making his run here to go meet with Luthen. It's not the best idea because this is the exact way that the Imperials, well, spoiler alert, find out where Andor is in the third episode. We then see Andor's mom type of figure, his mom, I guess I'll just call her, walk into his room and see that he's not there. Boohoo, she's kind of sad about it, he's gone now. But I have a good feeling that they're going to reunite, you know, sometime in the future of this overall show, whether it be by the end of season one or in season two. I'm not completely sure. I would like to quickly mention that the actress that's playing this character, her name is Marva. I'm not going to completely just call her Andor's mom for the entirety of this video. Fiona Shaw is the lady that plays this, uh, I guess, woman right here, this character here, and she does a phenomenal acting job. That goes for everybody in this show. I mean, the acting is top tier throughout this entirety of this show. I love it. It is from here where we go back to those flashback scenes. Remember I was talking about those like just a couple of minutes ago? This here is where this poor girl is about to like meet her end as this one dude that she goes past this so to speak dead body wakes up and kind of goes berserk he sees all these other like people around him he's just kind of like starts shooting aimlessly he ends up hitting the poor leader girl and uh well she kicks the bucket and from there they all dart this guy to death until he just like is totally finished off i mean it kind of does bring in some of those grittier tones and themes with andor but i feel like this isn't anything different compared to the return of the jedi with the whole uh ewoks and everything like that i'm also overly disappointed that like nobody decided to say anything they all just watched from the tree line as this dude was waking up and starting to like go berserk and then accidentally shoot the leader of this tribal group. I mean, it's honestly really depressing. They should have done something, I guess. But I'd also like to once again kind of point out the green, I guess, uh, features on all these guys here, like a black wing type of virus, as I had mentioned previously before. I'll be talking about this in a separate future video here on the channel as a Star Wars series. So hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be, you know, I guess, notified for that. Also, honestly, RIP this poor girl. I mean, they all seem like so sad about it. Honestly, a tier acting job right here as well, as I had just mentioned. Oh yeah, and it's also right here where you kind of see Cassian like really lose his stuff right here. He starts kind of really freaking out and as everybody's carrying away her poor dead body, he stops and looks back at this like Imperial facility or like crashed Imperial ship rather. And as we see in the third episode, he decides to go in it and just like start tearing it apart and like rampaging and everything like that. That there is up until we see his mother type of figure, Marva, come and I guess rescue him to an extent because there are other Imperials coming down to this crash site here to kind of clean it up and everything like that. And then again, going back into the, I guess, current timeline of when this show is taking place, we see Andor meet with one of his chums. This guy works at like a, I guess like train station almost type of thing or a shuttle type of facility of where different shuttles are going on and off of the world. And it, Cassian is asking about like once as soon as he can get out of here and, and all that type of stuff there as well. Keep the engine hot type of thing. This is also a reference to uh, something that he says in the Rogue One movie. Shout out to whoever I guess posted this on Instagram or maybe I saw it on Twitter. I'm not completely sure. From there we go to probably one of the most awkward Imperial scenes of all of Star Wars. We go to the crew with 
Cyril, and they're all on their way to this planet of where Andor is. It's kind of like this huge climatic moment that we see in the third episode. Anyway, Cyril, the one officer, and then the other, like, chumly type of looking officer are the ones that are giving, like, these, like, inspirational type of speeches to these other crewmates. They're all called corporals, is what they're referred to as in the show, but they're really just Imperials. And Cyril just isn't the best, I guess, with giving those types of inspirational types of speeches. It's the most awkward thing ever. Everybody's just, like, like looking this dude down. I almost feel bad for him to, like, a certain extent, but this dude's, like, an a-hole in the third episode, I guess, as we kind of further on see. I also love the parallelism of this scene, the shot right here, where he's standing in front of everybody, and it goes to this scene of where he's standing in front of nobody, and I think it's kind of, like, leading towards this whole, like, redemption arc for this guy here as well. It's something I kind of poked a little bit at in, I think, the first episode breakdown video here on the channel, so I'll be talking about this in a future separate video here on the channel as well, going a little bit more in depth with that and everything I think that's going to go on with that. From there, we have an awkward scene then with Luthen as he's riding like a public transport type of thing. It's like a public bus, so to speak, of where he meets this like weird dude that starts talking to him. And like we something else we kind of learn regarding like world building and character developing here with this whole timeline of where we are at in the Star Wars universe. Nobody likes the Empire, especially nobody on this planet is something that we more heavily see in the third episode as well. Like they have like a whole plan uh, that they have going there for themselves if the, I guess, Imperials ever come to their planet, which is very cool. And just the, kind of like the whole point of this scene, aside to be kind of a, like a little bit comedic at the same time, it's also kind of just world building and character developing as well, but also importantly, like humanizing Star Wars characters. Like these are just normal everyday people and they run into these awkward situations of where they might have to ride some type of public transport and then they run into like some weirdo type of thing. Although I will say props to this dude, like he's just a nice dude, I guess overall. He's not like entirely completely weird, but you guys get the point. It is from there where the episode finally concludes with this total badass looking like scene right here of Andor just walking through like the scrapyard and just looking cool and menacing and everything all of the above. I just love it. He looks really cool and he's off to wherever he's going to go meet Luthen, this little like warehouse type of thing that we see in the third episode, I think if I remember correctly, but I'm not completely sure. I'll be talking about that in our third episode breakdown here. I'll hopefully have out quite shortly here after this video here as well on the channel. If you guys haven't already, go check out our first episode breakdown video as well. And I would love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about Andor so far? What do you guys think about the first three episodes? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Overall, really my only type of theory or prediction out there would be the whole Blackwing virus, something I had mentioned previously before with like those flashback scenes and these guys that are like in the crash Imperial crash site and they're like all green and all that type of stuff. It's something I'll be talking about in a separate future video here on the channel. So hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified for when that comes out. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it as you're really just helping the channel and check out Instagram and official Star Wars from our Star Wars little content link down in the description down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great one guys. May the force be with you as always. This has been Unofficial Star Wars. Peace out.